We love food, colored green, bell peppers, and long string beans. Pickles, celery, cucumbers, too. All these foods are good for you. Welcome to Storytime Cooks, where we learn about food through books. Today we're going to be reading a fun story, Samson the Piranha Who Went to Dinner. And this is by Taj Bentley, also illustrated by him. And it's a, a Basler and Bray publisher. Samson was a rather adventuresome fellow. He's swimming down there under the ocean. While other piranhas stayed close to home, he wanted to explore far and wide. And while they stuck to the same old routine, Samson liked to get out and try new things. Excuse me, would you like to play a game of tennis? He's asking a friend. No. How about a trip upstream? No. Poor Samson, no one wanted to do what he wanted to do. Most of all, Samson dreamed of eating fine food at the fanciest restaurant. But while he drooled at the thought of luscious lily linguine and crispy kelp cakes, the other piranha ate the same boring food day after day. So every day, Samson ate alone until one morning he saw something he thought might change their minds. Fishy Times Fancy Restaurant Open Today is what the newspaper said. Hmm. Maybe he could get his friends to go. Fancy restaurants opening today. Perhaps you gents might want to join me for a... No way. Not for me. Silly Samson, restaurants are no place for a piranha. Perhaps they were right. With their fearsome features and terrible teeth, piranhas really weren't very welcome anywhere, let alone in a fancy restaurant. But he had to try. So Samson set off alone and soon arrived at the first restaurant. He smiled his friendliest smile and approached the waiter. Excuse me, sir, I was wondering if I may. Salty mother of mackerel, the waiter said. Piranha! And everyone ran or swam. Poor Samson. His friends were right. He couldn't get into a restaurant looking like a piranha, but maybe he could get in looking like something else. He needed a disguise. Samson checked his mustache and fluffed his eyebrows. He could almost taste the luscious lily linguine and the sizzling seaweed sausages. So he put on a pair of glasses that have a mustache and eyebrows attached. Pardon me, pardon me, but I believe you have a reservation for Samson P. Rana. Let me see. Of course, Mr. Rana, right this way, please. So far, so good. He's gotten in the door. Samson peered eagerly into the restaurant, and when he saw the plates piled high with that crispy kelp cake and duckweed sauce, he couldn't help but smile a large, very large piranha-like smile. Scaly Neptune crab cakes, the crab said. Piranha! And they all swam. Samson's smile disappeared as fast as the fish in the restaurant. He couldn't get into a restaurant, and he didn't fit in at home. Samson felt more alone than ever. There was only one more restaurant, one more chance for a fancy meal. This time, he would make sure his disguise was perfect. This is it, thought Samson, and he put on a great big beard that covered up his teeth. He nervously swam up to the final restaurant. Excuse me, my name is Mr. Rana, and I have a reservation for this evening. Ah, oh, Major Rana, of course, right this way, please. And there are all the people eat, or all the fish eating in the restaurant. Would you like to sample some creamy crab souffle, or perhaps some crispy kelp cakes? Samson's mouth watered. He had finally made it. Please, sir. Allow me to take your hat. Oh, no. Samson couldn't believe it. His dream was about to come true, but just then, when he took off the hat, it took off his disguised beard with it. And so they figured out he was a piranha again. 
and ever, all the other fish swam away. Poor Samson. He didn't ever get all that yummy food he wanted. But this time, as fish scattered this way and that, taking their delicious kelp cakes and souffles with them, Samson realized he wasn't the only fearsome fish who wanted to dine on fancy food. And with his new friends came a new idea. They could open their own fancy restaurant, one where food was so good that the time, that this time, it wasn't Samson wearing a disguise. He got to go because he started his own restaurant with friends who maybe weren't very pretty fish either, and they could all enjoy some fancy food that tastes yummy. Well, this story is a fun one, but we can have fun if we go to a restaurant or we can just pretend that we have a restaurant at home. So it doesn't have to be anything special. We could have something as easy as tacos. But one of the things in this fancy restaurant that they had was their silverware placed on the table. And this might be something that you haven't normally done at home, but encourage your children to set the table. And we've got a little clue to help remember which way our silverware goes. So on the left-hand side of our plate, we have our napkin and our fork. So we can remember N for napkin, F for fork, and that goes on the left. So NFL. Football season isn't quite here yet, but it will be before long. And NFL, napkin, fork, left, might help us remember where we put those pieces of silverware. On the opposite side of the table, you're going to have your knife and your spoon. With our knife, we always want to put the sharp side of the blade next to the plate. And that way, when we pick up our spoon, we don't have to worry about accidentally scratching ourselves on that knife blade. Our cup is going to go above our knife. Anything that we drink is going to go on the right side of our plate. And if we had a salad bowl or a bread plate, it's going to go on the left side of the plate. So drinking things go on the right. Things that we eat go on the left. Sometimes if you do go to a fancy restaurant, you might see multiple pieces of silverware. And sometimes folks will say, is that yours or is that mine? Which piece belongs to me? So this is a good way for you to remember that your knife and spoon are going to be on the right side of your plate and your fork is going to be on the left. If you have multiple forks, you're going to start with the outside one and work your way in. And if you do have some silverware at the top of your plate, it actually would go with your dessert. And then your glass or your cup is going to go above your knife. So that's a good way for you to remember. On our plate today, we have some yummy tacos, which are a perfect summertime meal can actually prepare your taco meat ahead of time and then when it's time to eat you can just heat that up and you don't have to wash a skillet each time. We also made some yummy veggie tacos this week. We took zucchini and yellow squash and carrots and onions and mushrooms and cut those all up in little pieces, put them in a Ziploc bag with some olive oil and two tablespoons of taco seasoning mix and then put those on a cookie sheet in the oven at 375 for about 45 minutes, stirring occasionally. That is a great substitute for meat if you're not a big meat eater, if you're trying to encourage um, your family to eat a few more vegetables. They'll really not even know it that way. But you could also do taco salads. You can do soft-shelled tacos, hard-shelled tacos, or just eat it with chips. So think about including lots of bright colored vegetables, lettuce, tomatoes, you could use onions, even those cucumbers that you might have in your garden, whatever your family might enjoy. Put some cheese, you might want some sour cream or guacamole. Make it however you want it to be. Pretend you're at a restaurant. Even let your kids take orders for drinks or just play restaurant for fun with play food. You create your own menu, create your own um, restaurant name and and have some fun um, thinking about food and, and ways to be a little bit healthier. It's always a great idea when we eat to try to have things from different food groups and those tacos. We had our meat was our protein, our cheese was our dairy, we had a, our taco shells were our grains, we had some yummy fruit, 
I'm sorry, some yummy vegetables on our taco. Those tomatoes, some people might say are fruit, um, but you might include some fruit for dessert or a snack. We hope you've enjoyed this segment of Storytime Cooks, and we hope you'll come back again next week and join us as we continue to learn about food through books. Peppers and long string beans, pickles, celery, cucumbers too, all these foods.